to Final Frontier News. From the furthest reaches of the universe to the innermost depths of the mind, this is Final Frontier News. Everybody, welcome to Final Frontier News. I'm here with uh, Dave Rose again. My name is Joe Cronin, Final Frontier News scientist. Um, well, this is really interesting, actually. Uh, Dave just brought this up to me. There's been a lot of things spotted. You know, we're talking about, um, you know, planets that they think that are inhabited by aliens because of the some gyro spin that's going on. There's stars doing that. There's alien megastructure here. But then there's also this thing called uh, Niku. They're calling it Niku. It's a weird object beyond Neptune that nobody can figure out, it says in the article on alienufosightings.com. An object beyond the orbit of Neptune acting oddly, violating the traditional rules of orbit, and scientists can't quite explain it. Yet the uh, trans-Neptune object, or TNO, has been nicknamed Niku, or the Chinese word for rebellious. When you consider the fact that Niku orbits the sun in an opposite direction of almost everything else in the solar system, it's not hard to see where the name came from. Now, Dave, um, you know, this brings up a great question. Many people say gravity pulls. You jump up in the air, you're pulled down to the ground by gravity. However, there is a contradictory idea from some people that gravity pushes what do you think about gravity in relation to this apparent rebellious object that's moving opposite to the others? Well, people need to understand that gravity is not a two-dimensional phenomenon, but in fact a three and definitely four-dimensional phenomenon. So you can't just assume that it's working on a two-dimensional plane. Gravity and mass, specifically in space, does in fact have that ability to both attract and deflect depending on the approaching angle, the weight between the two um, masses, um, and there's a few, obviously a lot more when it comes to the uh, astrophysics of this uh, sort of encounter between two bodies, two celestial bodies. But uh, definitively, you have found evidence in the solar system, for example, where you've seen a lot of comets and asteroids that have been flung into the inner solar system because of the gravity wells that have been created by the outer solar system planets. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, who knows what could be pulling on what? And like you said, uh, so so there's really no point in a fight where someone says, well, gravity just pulls. Gravity just pushes. It's really neither one of those, right? Because it all depends on where the the gravity stems from, I suppose, and what's affecting it around it and everything. Um, That's interesting. And I I never knew what to make of people who said gravity pushes. Um, But yeah, this thing is going opposite. Niku is 160,000 miles fainter than Neptune, but it has been observed 22 times by astronomers, according to a paper published um, to the uh, ARXIV uh, detailing the discovery. That is uh, all coming from this article here on uh, alienufosightings.com. Uh, let me see if I can find something else. The, the, now, they talk about it in relation to Planet 9. So, Niku orbits on a plane that is tilted 110 degrees from the plane of the rest of the solar system. One theory is that a large object, um, uh, gravity is, a large object's gravity is actually influenced Nico, uh, causing it to orbit at an angle to uh, everything else. That's why it's uh, backwards. Uh, various theories, like a super hidden Earth known as Planet 9, or Nibiru, formerly maybe Planet X, an unseen dwarf star called Nemesis or an unknown dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt um, could be the problematic reason. Uh, You know, there's also theories about, you know, Planet 9 being a dead sun 
uh, being a former son, being a second son, being that we could be in a binary system. So there's got to be two. And so some people say there's a second son, and then there's an argument that, well, we don't see the second son, so you're crazy. But if the second son is actually burnt out and is indeed a super dark object with just an unbelievably massive object, uh, then it could be there, and that could be altering um, this Niku. But then it could be planet, the actual planet nine or Nemesis or Nibiru, and uh, you know, really, we don't know. We can't see. An elliptical orbit makes it even harder to find. Um, what else is there? Uh, the the uh, Chen and the uh, fellow astronomers conclude that the mechanism causing and maintaining this common plane is still unknown to them. It seems possible that a collision could have sent Niku spiraling off on its own. So it's possible. Or the TNO was captured from another part of the galaxy when it passed close enough to the sun. But whatever... Either of these could explain the object's behavior is still unclear. The team recommends further study, which, uh, given Bannister's excitement about the discovery, is likely to come soon. And he says, it's a wonderful thing. It's so confusing, Bannister told New Scientist. I'm looking forward to seeing what the uh, uh, theoretical analysis do once they get their uh, hands on this uh, situation. So that's... Uh, that's pretty uh, interesting stuff. I mean, the more... It seems like every couple of years now, or every year even, Dave, that on the outer end of the solar system, especially past Pluto and around Pluto and beyond Pluto, in that, in that, va that just in that area, just outside, it's like we're finding more and more stuff. We're finding more and more things that we couldn't see before that we didn't know there. And all that talk about you know, a planet X or another, something on an elliptical orbit seems just so much more believable now based on all these things that we're finding out there that we didn't know were there. I mean, uh, I don't know what it means to you when, when this thing is moving in opposite directions, but it's, uh, it's definitely fascinating. I just don't know what it means for us and how much, once they locate it, can't they start to measure its path and start to see where its, you know, its its path is? What what is it? What is it going around? What is its gravity like? You know, do we? Because it's going to well, take years to find that out, right? It, it's going to take many years, probably even decades, to figure out exactly what kind of orbit it has. And many people don't seem to understand exactly how vast our solar system is because you also have to consider that the Kuiper belt as well as the Oort cloud which surrounds the entire solar system is extremely large so if you're gonna define this by astronomical units one astronomical unit is basically the distance from the Sun to the earth so that's one unit it's 10 Astronomical, astronomical units from the Sun to Saturn and it's uh, sorry 10 to the first power from Sun to Jupiter uh, to Saturn sorry mm -hmm. now to the Kuiper belt it's 10 to the power of two astronomical units so that's a huge distance that's way beyond Pluto and this is essentially in the area where this Niku, planetoid, um, whatever you want to define it right now, because obviously at that distance, the technology even that we have today is still difficult to properly identify. But as it progresses, like you said, we find more and more and more um, objects that are orbiting at these really distant locations, but they are essentially part of our solar system. And if you look even further from the Kuiper belt, the Oort cloud is essentially 10 to the power of four astronomical units. And again, this is even larger and it sort of encases the solar system in sort of a shell with all this different space matter, gases, um, asteroids, and there's, there's constant motion in these areas. So you will find some, as, uh, some um, 
meteors and um, comets and such that come from the outer solar system towards Earth uh, because of the interaction with the other objects in the Oort cloud or the Kuiper belt. So even at these far distances, although it might take a long time for them to come into the inner solar system, there is a constant ballet and balance in the rest of the solar system that we can currently not see. And some of the, some of it that we can see, it seems like some of the chaos is on that outer realm. Like we're very familiar with how our planets move in our you know, our planets here in our solar system, but it's all these other entities and bodies that we're finding that are just, you know, kind of blowing our minds a bit. And if only we could study up close some of these ones that they're finding so far away where they use that, you know, method of seeing if the planet wobbles or not or, or those type of things. Like, it would be so cool to be so up close and see that, but, you know, we'll never know. But we, we're finding out we can't even, you know, there. We, you, you think about as far as we go we're always ahead of ourselves right because we're 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 now just finding out about the outer solar system that there's these masses and these other planets and other things we didn't even know and they're right in our backyard but geez you know dave when you think about it we haven't even explored most of the ocean and we live here so it's 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 really you know, we're always reaching to the next area, but at the same time, we have by no means covered all the grounds even on our planet. And then even on the moon, or even on, and then when we get to Mars eventually, and then what's on the outer soil. So there's just so much to learn, so much to discover. We're finding more things on our planet now. Um, you know, in, in one of our next videos, I, I want to speak about some of the new drawings and ancient um you know, depictions that they found that completely contradict everything that we knew. And really not many people are speaking about it. And that is uh, shocking to me because this stuff could change everything that you think of or we know. And these it's right out of the movie like Prometheus or something. And they're finding these things that contradict it. The ancient alien show would have a field day with some of the things that they're finding um, in, in and I forget now all the places that they found them. Romania and Amsterdam were a couple, but there's uh, somewhere else where they have found a really interesting drawing. Um, and one of them depicting two suns. And one of them on the second sun is very similar to where, you know, that dead uh, sun is or that dead planet is or whatever it is. And if it's binary, so it connects back here to Niku. Uh, the, um, and yeah, so it'll be exciting, Dave. Like, imagine in 20 years, we can sit here and. Um, you know, if we remember to do this, if we ever can think about to do this, because at that point you think they would probably be able to chart the orbit of Niku within 20 years. So in 20 years we could be sitting back here looking at the chart of the uh, orbit of Niku. It, it wouldn't, wouldn't that be crazy just to be like, you know, 20 years ago we just discovered it, and here's, here's what they came up with it of the orbit. Maybe it'll be sooner than that. That'd be great. Anything else you wanted to say, Dave, on Niku? No, just keep your eyes to the skies. Keep looking up. Go get that telescope. Go in the backyard. You might be the one to discover something. <laughs> <laughs>